This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. Leases need to be in writing. And you know, I'm, this is a battle that I, I feel like I fight and fight and I preach and preach and even my own dad I have issues with. Uh, but really, putting a lease in writing, what it does is it protects both the landlord, it protects the tenant, and it protects the relationship between them. And a lot of times, that may be what's more important than the rest of it. And so, the first thing I would say is get those leases in writing. Doesn't have to be complicated, doesn't have to be adversarial, just get them written down. So that's the first thing I would say. Uh, the second thing that we talk about from the landowner perspective is set a stocking rate. And I think for a landowner, that's the most important term you could have in a grazing lease. And that's strictly just to protect your uh, your property, right? That, that what you've got, the value you have there is your grass. And so we want to protect that from somebody coming in for a year, you know, running way too many cows, grazing it to the dirt, and then causing a problem. Uh, from a tenant perspective, one of the things I think it's easy to overlook uh, for, for a tenant, um, I think it's really important to look at termination rules for a lease. So for example, a lease a lot of times will spell out, look, you know, the lease can be canceled upon 30 days notice. From a tenant's perspective, I want that notice to be as long as I have because I'm going to have to go find somewhere else to put those cows or figure out where to get them sold or whatever. So for a tenant, I really pay attention to what are the um, termination provisions, who can cancel the lease, when can it be canceled, and how much notice do you get. Um, one thing I've really seen pop up are solar leases, uh, which has been interesting, and, and at least in Texas, we've seen those all over the states. Uh, folks are going out trying to lease up land for solar, and landowners are contacting me to sort of get some information on, hey, what should we think about here? What are some terms we need to look at? What are the going rates for that? So solar leases have been big. I've been getting a lot of questions lately also on landowner liability. If you, own, if you own land or if you lease land um, for cattle, I think it's important to make sure that you're protected from a liability standpoint. So if somebody comes on your property and gets injured, what can you do? One of the easiest and most important things is to have liability insurance. And so uh, it's one thing I've really been doing a lot of educational work on for landowners and agricultural tenants is making sure that they have liability insurance. So that's come up a lot as well. So in the next 20 or so years, we're going to see a lot of land change hands. But we look at the statistics on the average age of the American farmer and rancher those just keep ticking up. Um, we're going to see a lot more absentee landowners, I think. As far as dealing with an absentee landowner, I think a couple of things. Again, that's where that written lease is so important because you may have somebody who doesn't understand ag and that written lease can really kind of govern your uh, interactions with them. I think that's important. I think educating that landowner is important as well. You know, some of those folks may have grown up on the farm and now they just don't live here. Talk to them about what's going on, you know, what I'm doing to try to help take care of things because that really can be a win-win relationship for both the absentee landowner and the tenant if they work it right. We're also probably going to see a lot of land um, taken out of agriculture, which could you know, pose some additional uh, issues as well. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.